Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Two, not four, two days to go till fandom. And I'm so hyped. And I know you lot are so hyped. And the Flash producer, Barbara Machete, and the Flash director, her very own brother, Andy Machete, was some, holding some pictures up. You know, um, Barbara was all in red, like the Flash. She had a Flash figure, and she was preparing us for a surprise at DC Fandom. Then Andy did a video. Now, disclaimer, you can't comment on Andy's videos. You can't even tag him. He doesn't allow it. I think maybe he was being harassed and bullied at the beginning when he was given the job, maybe by some, not all, some Snyderverse fans, so he thought, you know, I don't want all of that. I want to focus on my job. But anyway, he did a video. He's basically, they finished The Flash. Um, he was talking about fandom very quickly and he was talking about a surprise as well. Now, something very interesting developed after this because someone commented on Barbara Machete's feed and said that it would be great if Henry Cavill was in The Flash. She liked that comment. So the big surprise could be Henry Cavill's Superman being in The Flash. He could be sitting next to Barbara and Andy at the Flash movie panel at DC Fandom. Now, I know this would break the internet. This is what we all want. I know we all want a man, another Man of Steel movie, but we, you, you've got to walk before you, you can run. Now, I've told you before that I believe he will be in The Flash, he will be in Black Adam, and he will be in Shazam, Fury of the Gods, but, you know... Nothing's, up, nothing's absolute in life. So all I can tell you is what I've heard, what I think, and we'll see what happens. I don't think he's done with Superman. He's been saying it for the past two years that he's not done with Superman and things are in development. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But yeah, um, I think that Henry will be announced. Last year they leaked, months before fandom actually leaked, that Michael Keaton's Batman would be in the Flash movie. Well, this time it looks like they may be keeping this secret for fandom, and that's really, really exciting. But what's really behind this is um, there is a power struggle right now between Warner Brothers Pictures and the Restore the Snyderverse community. Because a lot of people call the Restore the Snyderverse community toxic, but I think it's a very smart community. So what they're going to do is do a Restore the Snyderverse event on social media during fandom Saturday the 16th of October this month in two days time. Now I'm kind of triggered by this but I do have to give out some admiration to the people that come up with these ideas because we all know that Restore the Snyderverse has already out-trended James Gunn's The Suicide Squad in hashtags. We know this. Again that triggered me but again if you're fighting for something you know you, you do what you have to do. So they are worried about this. Now, I don't know. If you ask me what's going to outtrend what, I would imagine a DC event like Fanda that's covering five upcoming movies and animation and comics shouldn't be outtrended by Restore the Snyderverse. But that's the thing they're worried about. So normally you wouldn't get a tease like this, but clearly they want people to know that big things are going to be announced. The thing is with DC Fandom, you can't just say big things are going to be announced. If you're teasing things, you have to follow through. Now, liking somebody's comment about Henry wanting Henry Cavill to come back, you know, that's very serious. So if that's not the case, you shouldn't be doing it. And I would have to criticise Barbara for that. But if she's liking it because she knows Henry is involved, and I do think Henry's involved. I told you from the very beginning that every member of the Justice League, apart from Ray Fisher's cyborg, although we don't know anything's possible in Hollywood, will reprise their roles in the Flash movie. I expect us to see the whole Justice League in picture together in the beginning of that movie, fighting a threat or something. Very similar to the Flash docs, uh, Flash, sorry, Flashpoint Paradox, get my words out, just like the Flashpoint Paradox animated movie. That's what we see, I think. And so, just because Henry's in it, just because Batflick's in it, doesn't mean these characters won't be deleted when Flashpoint is fixed. We don't know what they're keeping, what they're not keeping. 
They could be keeping everything. They could send some Snyder characters to another Earth. There could be a brand new Justice League when Barry fixes Flashpoint. We just don't know. But I am pretty certain that Cavill's involved, and I kind of think that Cavill will be announced for this movie. Now, normally I think they would have left this as a surprise, but as I've been saying for weeks and months, even years, you know, we need some clarity about the Henry Cavill, you know, situation. So if Henry Cavill can just cameo in all these DCEU movies going forward from Flashpoint onwards, I will be very happy. Even if he doesn't get a movie, of course I want him to be in a movie. That's not the point. I'm a compromiser, you know, because he is the Earth One Superman, and it's great if he can mix with all these characters. But because they're unifying the universe, I don't know what they're going to do with him. That's kind of the mysterious element. But if she's liking a comment like that, and, you know, people like comments, and we make two and two and get 600 sometimes, and it doesn't work out, but you shouldn't be liking a comment like that if that's not what you're planning. But of course, just because they don't announce it at fandom doesn't mean Henry won't be in the Flash movie. Now, a few months ago, while the Flash movie was shooting, Aquaman still shooting and was shooting then, uh, and Black Adam and Henry was on a plane saying, off to work. So I don't know where the plane was going. I think it was going to America. Um, so anyway, so it looks like um, certain portions... What, what you've got to understand is a lot of these, a lot of these movies, especially The Flash have kept a lot of things from you and us. The things that you've seen are the things that they want you to see. And I've al already tried to explain to people that before, but nobody listens to me. You ain't got a lot of subscribers. No one watches your videos. Why do you think you matter? Well, I do matter. I do think I'm relevant and I do think I know things. And if you choose not to follow this platform and not listen to me, that's up to you. But the people watching this video right now, go back to everything I've ever predicted. How many times have I been wrong? And everyone's wrong sometimes, you know. And yes, a broken clock can even be right twice a day. I get that. But I tell you what, when you look at my score about my predictions, it's somewhat scarily, haughtingly accurate. So that tells you something about me and what I know. And so I think that... Henry Cavill is in this movie, and I would suspect announcing him for the Flash movie would be a big deal. Why keep it a secret? You can keep his cameos in Fury of the Gods and um, Black Adam a secret, even though it's the worst kept secret, he will be in those movies. So, you know, Seven Bucks wanted him. Seven Bucks are running those movies, really. It's interesting, really. I think Seven Buck Productions, or whatever they're called, which is... Um, Dwayne Johnson's ex-wife's production company are really running those movies, but they're still part of the DCEU and Walter Hamada is in charge of those movies. And so that would kind of mean that Henry wouldn't really be in direct contact with Warner Brothers Pictures because I think things are a bit frosty there. But I think when David Zaslav takes over, all these kind of situations can be ironed out anyway. So I'm not worried and neither should you be. But yeah, so that's my prediction that the big surprise is Henry Cavill, but as one of my subscribers said to me on Twitter yesterday, Ronnie Dodge, they're probably going to show us the Flash suit. I think the Flash suit will be a sensational reveal because apparently te the technology on it is sensational. And, um, and Andy did show us um, some drawings of it last year, and it looks on another level. So that would excite fans as well. And we may see Michael Keaton in the suit as well. So, listen, the, you know, expect big reveals at DC Fandom, and not just for the Flash movie, you know, announcements, announcements for new projects. This is a very exciting event. And, you know, we just got two days to go. Yesterday, I did something very exciting, actually. I actually made sure I get notified for DC Fandom 30 minutes before it launches. Um, it's on my calendar now, so I can't miss it, as I was going to miss it anyway, right? So, yes... That's the big news from yesterday, that Barbara Machete liked to comment about Henry Cavill being in the Flash movie. And her and Andy were teasing on Instagram that there is a surprise or surprises to be announced at DC Fandom for the Flash movie. So, yeah, definitely get hyped about that. I mean, it could be Brandon Ralph's Superman. It may actually be about the Flash. That would be, a qu that would be quite refreshing, wouldn't it? But, of course, Ezra Miller will be there. Listen... I said it on a video the other day. This is Ezra Miller's Barry Allen's The Flash's movie. No question. He's just going to share the screen with multiple versions 
of these DC characters and that shouldn't be an issue for anyone. Superman writer thinks Zack Snyder's version was too relatable. <laughs> There's just no pleasing some people, is there? Action Comics writer Philip Kennedy Johnson said he believes that Superman in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel was too relatable by Liam McGuire of Screen Rant. The Man of Steel is the last solo Superman movie and current action comics writer Philip Kennedy Johnson explained why he enjoys Christopher Reeve's version of the hero more than the Henry Cav Cavill starring flick. In a panel at New York Comic Con, Johnson, who's currently writing action comics, the most recent Kal-El title at DC Comics, said he prefers his Superman is a little less relatable than the version who appeared in Zack Snyder's 2013 film. 2013's Man of Steel is one of the more divisive superhero movies to come out in recent memory, as the film has a mix of detractors and loyal faithfuls who hold, in, hold it in high regard. The blockbuster was directed by Zack Snyder, starred Henry Cavill's Superman, and focused on the character's origin and becoming Superman. The film retold Kal-El's iconic origins from being sent to Earth as a baby following the destruction of Krypton to coming to his own with his extraordinary powers to becoming the world's greatest hero. The film received mixed reviews, however, Cavill's performance was lauded as he would play the role in the film's sequel Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice and in, in the team-up Justice League film. Philip Kennedy Johnson, who currently writes action comics uh, for DC Comics talked at New York Comic Con, htcbr.com, about how he viewed Superman. Johnson said his vision of Superman is clear. While admitting different creators have different opinions on their versions of the hero, he said his vision aligns closely with Christopher Reeve's portrayal of Superman, but more like hulked out physically and in a context of these big epic scenarios, but I just loved that. He added that version of Superman has no ego when he smiles that his attitude was, I'm your friend, I'm going to help you. Johnson said he felt like Cavill's take on Superman was too conflicted. <sighs> Johnson explained that in his opinion, the Man of Steel Superman is too relatable and that his take on the hero sh shows him as the best of us always. I don't mean like physically or his acting or even that, but just the approach of the Man of Steel film in which he's kind of searching for himself. You might see him make a mistake or he gets opportunities to help and he might not do it right away or he's conflicted, you know, like they like seeing a more relatable Superman and that's not what I like at all. The writer concluded, I want to see, I want a Superman that shows us the way and shows us how we're supposed to be. That's the best of us always. Johnson's criticisms are completely fair, but it's worth noting that his version of Superman in action comics is the fully fleshed out hero, while Cavill's Man of Steel was still learning the ropes. Obviously, that's the point, isn't it? Of course, Johnson's take on Superman is going to star the best version of Kal-El imaginable, as he's been the hero for years in his comic run. Meanwhile, Zack Snyder's Superman in Man of Steel was still learning what being the best of us always truly meant. There's no denying both Johnson's take on Superman and Henry Cavill's Superman are fairly different. But as Johnson mentioned, every writer's Superman is a little different. So what's my take on this? Listen, for you, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> dear, dear, I'm choking on my frustration. But here's my take on this. Right, for years before Man of Steel and even after Superman Returns and, you know, the years when Smallville was on, we were hearing comic book writers bore on how Superman isn't relatable. You give them a relatable Superman and they don't like it. So what are you supposed to do? They say we want him to be inspirational. We want him to smile. We want him to be a friend. This version of Superman was going to become all of that, as you know. But Zack was going to take a, a slow journey to that. Zack created him as a beginner who had to face this invasion and then the hatred of BVS and then being brought back from the dead in Justice League. Then Justice League 2, we were going to see the nightmare future. Then he was going to lead an army of metahumans and defeat Darkseid. Then he would be the Superman that he knows and we know and we love. It was supposed to be an arc a story and I'm surprised nobody could see this and I know Zach's told us this already 
but it was pretty obvious he was doing this anyway. But what gets me about these comic book writers is, for years they've been saying, it's so hard to write Superman, you know, he's so powerful. Well, Zack Snyder said, I'll make him powerful, but I'll make him easy to write as well. I'll give him motivations. I'll give him struggles. And Snyder certainly did that. But he was still Superman. In Man of Steel, he actually does smile. He has some banter with Lois Lane. He has some banter with his own mother. He has a warm relationship with his mother. He saves that guy falling out the helicopter. He destroys the world engine and destroys his own people to pr protect humanity. You know, yes, he's more relatable. He's more like us. He's got anger issues as well. I love that bit when he screams at Zod, you think you can threaten my mother. But that's good. That's not a bad thing. So these people, you know, I grew up on Christopher Reeve's Superman. That's why I love the character. But Christopher Reeve's Superman was introduced to the world in 1978. And that Superman, and I'm sorry about this, like that, purely like that, simply isn't going to work for a modern day audience. Because you can't just make Superman fans happy, you've got to bring in the broader audience because that's where the money is. We've spoken about this so many times. So the way Snyder, um, Snyder, Terrio, Goya and Nolan went at this character was the right way. And it worked. For a lot of us, not for everyone, but once we got to Justice League 3, that would have been your Superman. Now, maybe you'd be frustrated because you didn't have that Superman in Man of Steel, BVS, Justice League 1, Justice League 2. But eventually, you would have got there and you would have wanted more. And you could look back at the beginnings of this character. Because Dick Donner did a great job. Christopher Reeve did a great job. But he doesn't have to earn anything. Literally, he, he's brought up in Smallville. He goes to Metropolis. Pre-Metropolis, he builds the fortress. He's Superman. He hasn't had to sacrifice anything or to lose anything. Even in terms of Lois Lane dying in Superman the movie, he just goes around the earth and brings her back. It's easy. Now, Snyder's Superman actually has struggles and actually has to earn everything. It's like um, our Miles Smallville. You know, the Clark Kent on that show has to earn everything. Even Lex Luthor has to earn the right to be the megalomaniacal villain that we know and love. He starts off as a conflicted good guy. It's a story. And Snyder was doing exactly the same thing. He wanted Superman to earn the right to be the Superman we know and love. And the, I suppose it says something about comic book writers. These are people who write comics, love comics, but they don't understand the element of, you know, a straggled story that takes his time, allows its characters to breathe. So their criticisms are weird. I just want this Superman. But does the world want that Superman? Just go on the internet. Look at how we talk to each other. Do you think a guy who smiles like that and says, I'm a friend, is going to work? Now, maybe it can. In terms of if you bring elements of Cavill's performance and mix it with Reeves' performance, so it's a mixture of the smiling, the friendliness, I'm a friend, but still being conflicted, you can still do the two things if you're clever. So I think life's about a balance, and I think stories are about a balance. So you can certainly kind of meet it in the middle, and that's fine. But, you know, as I say, these are the people, you know, these are the people who said, you know, Superman's impossible to write, you know, oh, no one can write Superman, it's difficult, you know, and, there, you know, there's many of us who have written Superman, even at home, in the privacy of our own homes, and we've probably done a better job than these people have. You know, we're coming off of the con controversy about um, Clark Kent's son, John, being bisexual. Can I just say something about that quickly? Why bi? Why not gay? Even if you're angry about him even being bi, think about it. Why is he gay? Should I explain to you why he's not gay? He's bi and not gay. I think I just said he's gay but not bi. I'm even getting confused. But anyway, the reason he's bi instead of gay is because down the road, Tom Taylor when nobody's looking and the attention's gone, will find him a nice woman to fall in love with and that will be his true love. That's what they do. It's fake representation and inclusion. It's not real. This character will probably be killed off or just leave the story eventually when nobody's taking any notice. Right now they've got the hype. Why have they done this? 
because it garners attention and comic books need all the attention they can get and all publicity is good publicity it's not about representation it's not about inclusion otherwise why not make the character gay the, pe the people who were, are angry now would still be angry but at least you the writer the people at DC Comics are doing this because you genuinely want to represent you know the members of this community but you don't you don't want to do that you're lying to those people you know and Tom Taylor's on CNN acting like he's just you know saved a billion children from starvation or anything no but these people are not interested in starving children these people are interested in virtue signaling and saying be kind be compassionate when you're not you're not kind and compassionate we know you we know what side of the political fence you come from and the shit that you talk so at the end of the day this thing about um, some John Kent being bi won't stick and that's why he's bi let me give you a comparison in the Loki series Loki is bi but he ends up with a woman <laughs> do you see what they did and Russell T Davies the previous showrunner of Doctor Who and the next showrunner of Doctor Who called them out for it because he's a gay man right so he has every right to talk about this this is what the English speaking entertainment industry do that's why things like Squid Games are becoming a sensation now because foreign language creatives are more talented than English speaking creatives I was watching I know this is a little bit unrelated to the DCEU but let's just talk about this for a minute I was watching the movies that made us I was watching the Robo I was watching the Robocop one I was watching the Nightmare on Elm Street one the movies I grew up with and the people who made the movies that I grew up with were daring people the studio execs were daring people they took risks they didn't have computers to do this stuff they had to do it in the fucking camera and they didn't even know if we were going to embrace this shit but they were so daring and so talented they did things for one reason A for entertainment for the art and B yes to make money because they're a business as well and there's nothing wrong with that we're in a capitalist society that's the way it works today entertainment is the last thing on these people's minds so when I see a comic book writer talking about a director a, a director's vision like Zack Snyder for Man of Steel and really Man of Steel is visually Snyder's vision but what's on the page is all down to Nolan and Goyer and Goyer, Goyer wrote the screenplay and Nolan and Goyer wrote the story so it's their vision and they probably fleshed it out with Snyder for him to lead the armies of metahumans in Justice League 3. You know, to, all these people are geniuses. And it's very different to write a movie than it is to write a comic. A comic is so much shorter than, than a movie, right? And you've got to make it, it's live action. It's different. Now, I like comics. Comics are the source material. They're a great concept. I love them. I love comics. I love Superman. But to say, you know, the, he's too relatable is ridiculous because you were the same people saying that Superman isn't relatable. Snyder makes him relatable and you don't like him. Now, I'm surprised he's even said he's relatable. I don't necessarily, I mean, it's funny actually, isn't it? Because as a kid watching Superman the movie with Christopher Reeve, which is my favourite one with Reeve in it, he seemed relatable to me. Because again, it's aspirational. Here's a guy from another planet who's got superpowers, who chooses to use them for good. He works, he works for a living, even though he could literally do anything he wanted if he showed the world who he was and no one could touch him, right? But he doesn't do that. He hides who he is for the good of mankind and he protects us. That's the thing about it. That's why I always loved that character because you want to be Superman. You want to be James Bond as a kid, a cool hero, you know, running around, beating people up, bad people up and saving the world. It was aspirational, but there's no aspirational now there. And as I keep on saying, now it's all about seeing yourself on, on the screen. And I think that's just bullshit. Just so basically this comic book writer complaining that Superman is too relatable is so the hypocrisy isn't lost on me. You know, the Christopher Reeves Superman was great, but we live in a stunted, conflicted era of humanity. Now, as I say, all you have to do is go on social media 
to see how angry everyone is about so many different things. And I try these days to take a step back from, you know, the angry, reactive bullshit. I try my best. It's, it's not easy. Believe you me, I'm 48 going on to 49. I grew up in another world. I grew up on the planet Earth, but a very different planet Earth to the world today, because these days, everyone has a mouthpiece. And when everyone's shouting, in the end, you will be deafened by all the screams and everything will go silent eventually. The world won't always be this way. But at the end of the day, as a Superman fan, I can tell you that I love Christopher Reeve's version. I love Tom Welling's version. I love Henry Cavill's version. I love Brandon Routh's version. I'm not a fan of Dean Cain's version, not because of his politics or the bullshit he says. But in fact, he talked about this very issue. And I think, I mean, he is a Republican. He is right. He is right wing, should I say. I'm not saying he's right. But he did point out some things. For example, he was saying, you know, why isn't this character trying to solve world hunger or, you know, what's going on with the environment and things like that. And, you know, you know what, who does this help, really? You know, and again, it's that mentality of seeing yourself on the screen. I don't really think that personally matters. You'll say, well, you, you've already, always seen straight males on your screen dominate entertainment. And that's true. And we want to see other people being represented. But at the end of the day, what they do is, and you can tell it, you can tell when something's fake and the intentions are not genuine because they did this and they went all over the press and social media to talk about it. But if it's in your comics and we can see it already, why are you boring on about it all the time? You know, let me tell you why. They want you to get ugly about John Kent, the new Superman, being bi. They want you to say it's wrong. They want you to say you don't agree with it. So they can say you, you and me are bad people. But you know how you destroy their narrative and fake propaganda by not commenting, not talking about it. If you ignore them, their propaganda and these people will be forced out of comics and the entertainment industry and we can go back to giving people escapism and great entertainment and daring do. Because with the more we talk about these people, the more they will stay. The more we ignore world hunger and child poverty and, you know, child abuse and homelessness and the struggling in the third world that those poor people have to go through. And we just talk about identity politics, even if it's us being triggered by it. We stay away from the problems we could be solving in this world. Yes, stories are important. These characters are important. They are our escape to a better world. And a lot of these people are trying to bring that down, but they can't bring it down for you. Don't buy their comics. Read the comics you read as a kid. It's okay. Don't watch their shit films. Just watch the stuff that you like. Forget about what you hate. Let them carry on. Let the English speaking, you know, Western entertainment system burn down. And foreign entertainment will take over. That's what's going to happen. They're doing it to themselves now. They are so creatively bankrupt. Yesterday I reacted to the Home Alone. Home Sweet Home Alone Again trailer. Basically, the rip-off of the first Home Alone. The trailer was shit, the acting was shit, it was embarrassing, and this is what this industry has become. A pale imitation of what we grew up with. With two days to DC Fandom 2021 to go, we are at the precipice of something huge, something changing. You know, our DC live action universe that we've had since 2013 is going to dramatically change. We know how conflicting it's been to the audience and different people, but it's going to change. It has leadership now and it's going a certain way and we'll see where that takes us. But I think after Saturday we will know a lot more things, but we won't have the information we will about the future of the DCEU and the DC live action universe until, the, until these films hit next year. So we are at an exciting moment. And I do believe that something's changed. Even something's changed since we saw Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyderka. And there was so much division between Zack, you know, WB Pictures, but I think that's changed. I think that's calmed down. I think we can have a DC live action universe that involves Zack Snyder, that involves all these other new line cinema directors that, that Walter Hamada's brought with him. 
that are working out really well and all these new visions. That's what a multiverse strategy is. And I think that's great. You will get some representation and inclusion. There is nothing wrong with it as long as the number one priority is to do these minorities in these roles justice and not say, smile, we just did you a favor and put you on the telly and put you in a movie because you're not doing anyone a favor. Those people have every right to be represented, but not just stood in front of the cameras so you can say you included them, but you give them proper stories and you direct them in the correct manner and you don't insult them by saying we did you a favor because you're not doing anyone a favor. But I am genuinely excited for the future of DC live action. Please stay with me on this journey because we've been on this incredible journey, this incredible journey since the very beginning. I have been and I joined you just before Aquaman and we were fighting for the Snyder Cut and I went to see Aquaman and I re reacted to that, that early viewing and you came along for the ride and I thank you for that. All 889 people. I really would love to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. It's been a slow burn, hasn't it? And obviously most of my subscribers don't watch my videos. That's, that's just one of those things. But I would love um, if I could get to a thousand subscribers. It would be great. It would enable me to do more things and to be seen on the algorithm. Because I do believe I'm passionate about movies and television and especially DC, especially Doctor Who and some other stuff in entertainment as well. And I think I can really be a voice, not a voice for the fans, a voice of a fan that represents you, not represents your views. You have your own views. I never speak for anyone. But what I'm saying is we are the same, McLeod. That's the point. I'm a fan. You're a fan. Because all the people you're following with a million subs, you know, are not interested. They're not interested in fandom. They're not interested in, this gr in these great movies. They're just interested in towing a company line. And what's brilliant about YouTubers like me, we speak our minds, we speak with passion, we speak each other's language. This has been the DCEU Daily. I'm Nick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection because it really is perfection. And I will see you tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Two days to DC Fandom. Anything could be revealed. This time next week, we will know a lot more than we do right now. Imagine next week's DCEU Daily is already being broadcast. And we're talking about some exciting news we found out at Fandom. Isn't that awesome? See you again tomorrow.